just for me, I wanted more. I always had that was like this like small voice within me that was always just like, no, like that's not your story. That's not your path. You could easily make it your path, but it's not your path. So I think that you have to, you have to want it and you have to not let the fear of whatever, a failure of not being enough, of not having enough money, of not being able to support yourself, whatever those things are, you have to let the fear of all of that in some ways not get in your way, but then at the same time kind of drive you to it. You know, I, I would yeah. kind of, um, you know, just, I would, I would be like, I'm afraid of that. So I'm going to actually like, I'm going to storm right through that and just like see what happens. Um, so that, that would be the biggest thing of, you know, do, do you really want this? And then if you do, like, are you willing to do whatever it takes to be the absolute best at it? And if that answer is yes, then you have no other option but to go for it. So the question is this, how do thought leaders, school dropouts, former and current students find out what's next after they do or don't cross that stage? If you want to know the secrets to starting the career or business of your dreams, getting paid whatever you desire, and discovering what you do the best with the least amount of effort, then this is the right podcast for you. I'm Sean Anthony, and this is School's Over. Now what? The podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to School's Over. Now what? The podcast. And I'm your host, Sean Anthony. Welcome to the show. This is going to be another epic event. But first off, let me tell you a little bit about why this show was created. If you have no idea, there are so many people that graduate college, high school, you think it, you name it, that are completely lost when it's all said and done. And what this show has done is allowed for people to further their education and learn from people who have already figured the main question out. And that school's over, now what? And each and every single week, we bring you an inspiring person or a message that's definitely going to get you there. And only thing I ask, and this comes to you right now, free of charge, F-R-E-E, this is free. You don't have to pay a single dime. But the only thing that I ask is that if you're gaining anything from this content, if this message is inspiring, if this show has brought you, you know, new ideas on your business and you're taking your entrepreneurship to the next level, or even if you're in a career and you just recently got promoted because you took some of the tactics and principles and applied them for yourself, the only thing I ask is that you tell a friend. Yes, by telling a friend, this show has grown and has played in more than 20 countries and has been downloaded thousands. That's right thousands of times and all you have to do is something very simple take a screenshot of you listening to the podcast post it up in your ig story and the rest will work magic and if you know anything about this show you know this show will be nothing without you and each and every single week i like to kick it off with the review of the week and this week's review comes from this week's review comes from mc leadership guy And he wrote, relatively new listener to the show. Sean's show has really impacted me as a professional. The content provided by the show should be expected listening for some young professionals out there. Consistently have my notepad nearby because every episode takes you back to the classroom. Thanks for what you do, Sean. This is inspiring and impactful. MC Leadership God, man, I appreciate you. And I'm always curious to know, you know, what is it that gets people ticking? And what is it to get people to that next level? And this content has provided that. And for that, I am humbled and I truly appreciate it. And if you're listening right now, if you haven't left a five-star review, please do so because I will shout you out each and every single week. With that being said, let's jump into the reason you click the button today. Our guest is none other than Julie Solomon. Yes, Julie Solomon is a 10-year publicist turned podcaster, blogger, and influencer marketing educator. And what I like about her is that she teaches women how to up-level their brand, purposefully connect, and market themselves online so they can do more of what they love. And Julie is extremely good at what she does. 
And what I like so much about this particular podcast episode is we dive deep. We dive deep into her background. And the background is so important to understand who a person is and how they got to where they are today. And we touch on the topic that a lot of people think about at some point in their lives, right? If you're graduating from college or you're finishing up high school, a lot of us wonder, okay, should I go back to my hometown? How do you lose that hometown mentality? How do you go after your dreams? And Julie is a perfect example of just that. Not only did she go after her dreams, but she moved across the country and has changed and impacted so many lives. And she also runs a, an amazing course called Pitch to Perfect. I will link that in the show notes. And this episode also is going to help those entrepreneurs who are wondering how to pitch their products. So with that being said, let's jump right into it. Ladies and gentlemen, episode 45 with the host of The Influencer Podcast, Julie Solomon. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to School's Over Now with the podcast, and I am here with somebody I have been waiting to get on the show, Julie Solomon is here today. Julie, how are you? I'm great. How are you doing? I am doing great. I'm excited for this one. Uh, I mean, what's the weather like there, like right now on the West Coast, right? You're on the West. Yep. Yep. I'm in LA and it's like, it's, you know, 70 and sunny. And I know that that just annoys people when us <laughs> LA people always say that, but it just is what it is. But it actually has been kind of, I mean, for LA, it's been cold. It's been like fifties and sixties and rainy for like a month. So this is a good day. That's, that's, that's awesome. So what I want to do is I kind of want to go back a little bit because everybody knows like you're, you're one of the top of people. You have one of the hottest podcasts right now, helping out so many influencers. I want to go back to the beginning for you. Tell us a little sure. bit about like, like, where are you from? Yeah, I'm from Nashville, Tennessee. So I was born and raised in the South and lived in Tennessee my whole life. I'm, I'm actually originally from a really small town outside of Nashville, but moved to Nashville when I was seven. And then I went to the University of Tennessee in Knoxville. Um, and then after that, I moved to New York City. Um, I had never been there and I didn't know anyone or kind of what I was going to do, but I just... I knew that um, if I was going to stay in Tennessee, then I would never leave. And I wanted to kind of experience a little bit more. Um, So I packed up and I moved to L.A. And I I graduated and I I majored in journalism and mass communication. So when I moved to New York, I wanted to get a job in PR, so publicity. And specifically music. I grew up loving music and loving every genre of of music from, you know, the four tops to Tupac, which is like behind you right now, (laughs) um, to country music, of course, um, pop music. So I I got into that and I, you know, just Googled because back then there there wasn't social media. So there was just Google. So I would Google like PR contacts and like would send my resume out and send emails out and try to get a job. And I landed an interview at a company, um, called press here publicity that's still there. And, um, and they repped, they were the, the publicists and managers for some of the biggest acts like Lenny Kravitz and pink and maroon five and, um, a lot of really cool things. And so I was able to, I landed a job there, assisting one of the head PR people. And so she was the publicist for Lenny and the publicist for, um, pink for Def Leppard for the Bob Marley estate. So wow. like Ziggy and, you know, all of his children that, that do music for some music festivals. Um, and so it was really, really cool. I got to do a lot of tour publicity and got to learn a lot about the music space for that time that I was there. And so I lived there for a couple of years. And then after that, um, moved back to Nashville. I loved New York. It was amazing, but I knew that I didn't want to be there forever. So, um, I moved back and I got a job doing publicity, but doing, uh, music publicity at the time. So I was, um, I'm sorry, not music publicity. I left the music publicity doing book publicity. So I got a job at a company called Thomas Nelson, which is now owned by Harper Collins. It's one of the biggest faith-based um, public publishing houses, um, in the U S in the world and, um, got to start working with some incredible thought leaders, pastors, um, just uh, entrepreneurs, uh, spiritual leaders, and, and got to really do a lot of really cool stuff on the book side and started working on some really massive book campaigns. Did that for a few years. Um, 
really enjoyed it, but kind of got to that crossroads again that I was like, I don't really know if I want to be in this corporate thing forever. And I had my own visions and my own ideas. And around that same time, I met my husband and my husband is 15 years older than me and he is an actor. And so he lived in LA. Yeah. And he's been out here since 1990. So we met and, um, I knew that if I wanted to be with him, I was going to have to move. So it's a total cliche thing, but like I totally moved to LA for a guy. (laughs) Um, and it ended up working out, but I found myself quickly. We got pregnant really quick. And so, um, not even a month after I'd moved here, I was pregnant and my husband is an actor in film. So he was on set. So he was going to Atlanta or New Orleans or Vancouver or whatever, doing his thing and working. And so I was, I was in LA a lot by myself and I was like, okay, I've, I've got to meet people. And at the time, you know, I'd left the company that I was with, but I had started my own book PR company with another woman. So we were co-owners. And so what would happen is that kind of the same stuff I was doing when I was in corporate America, I was now just doing on my own. So I was able to work from anywhere as long as I had, an, I had a laptop, which was great, but I didn't really know a lot of people out here. So it was around that time that I decided to get into blogging because I thought that that would be a really cool and unique way that I could meet people. So um, I started blogging, I started meeting other bloggers, and I started kind of networking. And I started to figure out early on, because this was about six years ago. Uh-huh. So blogging was definitely a thing, but monetizing you know, like Instagram and all of that was just kind of starting. And because of my background in PR, I knew how to pitch myself. And so I was able to pitch myself for brand deals and land those brand deals and monetize my blog and my Instagram pretty quickly. And so then I started having all of these other people that were coming to me being like, I have way more followers than you do, but you're making more money than me. Like, how is this working? And so I was like, well, I know how to pitch myself. I know how to like, you know, talk to these brands and I understand things like their return on investment and their marketing budgets and what they're looking for. And so from that, I started kind of offering a lot of free resources, a lot of free blog content. And I would do, you know, I would talk at small networking things here, just kind of getting my name out there is really kind of being known as the go-to person for pitching. Yeah. If you wanted to pitch yourself and if you wanted to monetize your influence uh, through pitching and through brand deals, you know, come talk to Julie Solomon. She'll she'll teach you how to do it. And so when I really noticed that a lot of people were wanting this, I created an online program and uh, that online program is called Pitch It Perfect. So it teaches influencers, entrepreneurs, bloggers how to pitch themselves so they can monetize their social media or their blog. Oh, wow. And um, yeah, and uh, we launched that about three years ago. And since then, it's become, you know, a seven figure program. We've had thousands of students take the program. It's phenomenal. We update it over the years, um, just to kind of keep with the trends in the current times. But um, from that, from that, I, I started diving more into this thing that we now call influencer marketing and really started getting more into like, I understood the PR worlds because I had done that for a really long time. I understood the, the blogging world because I had also done that and I started to teach bloggers and be that resource for them. And so I started to notice that there were a lot of people like coming, I mean, lots, hundreds and thousands of people coming out of the gate day in and day out wanting to do this influence thing, you know, wanting to monetize their Instagram, wanting to grow an influence, wanting to start a YouTube channel, wanting to do whatever that was. And this was almost, it was, this was about two years ago, April of 2017. I was like, well, what is another good way for me to kind of get my stuff out there? And that was podcasting. And at the time it was, it was, it was big, but it wasn't like it is now. I feel like a lot of people ask me why I think my podcast, like, why is the podcast so successful? But I, and I, again, I know this is annoying when people say it, but I think we hit it right before it got super saturated, you know? And so I think that, you know, and, and I'll hear that. I used to hear that bloggers would tell me that all the time. I'm like, yeah. how do you have such big, you know, how do you have hundreds of thousands of followers on Instagram? And they were like, well, I just kind of hit it before everyone else did. And I would be like, that's really annoying. <laughs> but now I'm saying it about the podcast. <laughs> yeah. But I think that that was because we got in April of 2017 and yeah. literally by like August of 2017, like that summer, it was like everybody was starting to podcast. And so um, at the time I was one of the first 
podcasters to come out to talk specifically about influencer marketing strategy and specifically to that audience of influencers and bloggers, female influencers and bloggers who, you know, I think that there's a lot of, I think there's been a lot of, um, uh, men who have been doing podcasting for a really long time because they actually come from that radio world, yeah. you know, and th- they talk about marketing and they talk about business strategy, but there hadn't really been a woman to come in to, to kind of be that female voice for those female influencers and bloggers who are wanting to do more lifestyle driven content. So, um, I, I started that and then that really kind of catapulted my awareness to a whole other level. So, you know, a lot of people knew about me as like the pitching expert through my course, but the podcast is what really kind of tilted me and my business over to kind of what everyone sees today. Oh, that's crazy because like, like you listen to all those things you've done and all the success you've had and, you know, the many people you've networked with. I'm curious to know, as you were growing up as a child back in Tennessee, right? What was some of those things that caught your attention that made you so curious? Yeah. You know, I think I come from a family that we didn't have a lot of money growing up. My dad is one of nine boys. They never went to college. Um, my, my grandparents were very uneducated. I mean, my grandfather was a coal miner from Kentucky. Um, very, very rural, poor people. Um, and, you know, I just, I, I think that part of that was just kind of, uh, there's like a, a resilience and endurance that's kind of like embedded in, in my DNA to just be a fighter and to not really give up and to just ask a lot of questions and kind of learn things. Cause that's kind of how it was when I was little, I had, I had to figure it out. You know, my parents were busy, like just trying to put food on the table. They didn't have time to like, you know, deal with me and my brother, you know, they like had their own stuff that they were dealing with. Yeah. And so we just kind of had to figure it out. And I, and I would see that a lot, you know, coming from a very blue collar working class home, that that's what we did. We didn't have a lot of money to like, you know, if, if, if the freaking toilet needed to be fixed, well, we had to figure out how to do it because we, we didn't have money to call a plumber or, you know, if something else needed to be happened. So I think that a lot of that, a lot of that curiosity just comes from like my own need to survive, I would think growing wow. up as a child. Wow. Yeah. So like there's a girl right now that you just touched. I mean, there's a girl right now listening to this who is in one of those situations. What was one of those things that so you could think outside of the box? How did you how, what, what was something that helped you think outside of that box, even though, you know, you didn't come from the best family, you know, you, you couldn't get the plumbing, you couldn't get certain things done. How were you able to think outside of that box and to see what your future could be like it is now today? Yeah, I think it was just it was that I always had this curiosity for for wanting more, you know, and whether I would see it in the movies or on TV shows or, you know, um, listening to music or reading it in books, I always knew that there was like this life out there and this world that I wanted to see and that I wanted to experience as a, at a very young age. I remember, you know, being like six or seven years old and thinking that way. Um, when I was little, I used to watch the wizard of Oz and Annie like all of the time. And it was, you know, it was like this orphan that like then like grows up to be <laughs> like in, in this like daddy Warbucks world. But this idea of, of wanting something more, um, so I always had that in me and, and just coming from a really small town, I was like, I don't want to be here. Like, I want to break that cycle, you know? Um, and then moving to Nashville, I think helped a lot too, because it wasn't a massive town, but it was a, it was much bigger town than I came from. And so living in Nashville, I, I was introduced to, to different cultures and just way of life. And I remember I met like the first Jewish kid I ever knew, you know? And I was like, I don't even know what that is. Like there was just like <laughs> Baptists and like church of Christ where I were from, like, you know? And so just kind of learning more like about different walks of life that people could have made me really curious. And, um, and even on until college, I remember just saying like, I don't want to move back to Nashville, maybe eventually. But in that moment, I was like, I don't want to just move back there. I've got to go and see and do an experience and just kind of do the things that, you know, maybe my parents or my my grandparents would have loved to have done, but it was never even in their reality because 
it just wasn't possible for them. So how, how do we break that lineage and, and go off to do that? So I think that's where that comes from. How important, I mean, you bring up so many good points. How important do you feel like it is for that person who's that college student, right? How important do you feel like it is for them to think and get outside of like their hometown? You know, some people are so so hometown stuck into their mind. Like, I got to go back home where my mom and dad lives. How important is it for you to, to just, you know, think different when it comes to that? Do you think that's yeah, a good I mean, deal? I do. And I, and I think that at the end of the day, you got to want it, right? Like I, I know people that honestly, like they just want to go home. Like they want to go back home. They want to work there. And they're like totally great with that. Yeah. And there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. Just for me, I wanted more. I always had that was like this like small voice within me that was always just like, no, like, that's not your story. That's not your path. You could easily make it your path, but it's not your path. So I think that you have to, you have to want it and you have to not let the fear of whatever, a failure of not being enough, of not having enough money, of not being able to support yourself, whatever those things are, you have to let the fear of all of that in some ways not get in your way, but then at the same time kind of drive you to it. You know, I, I would kind of, um, you know, just, I would, I would be like, I'm afraid of that. So I'm going to actually like, I'm going to storm right through that and just like, see what happens. Um, so that, that would be the biggest thing of, you know, do, do you really want this? And then if you do, like, are you willing to do whatever it takes to be the absolute best at it? And if that answer is yes, then you have no other option, but to go for it. Hey guys. So let me take a guess. You're enjoying the show. And if that's right, please make sure that you take a screenshot of you listening to the podcast right now and tag me at Sean R. Anthony underscore. I promise you this is going to help in amazing ways. And while you're at it, hit the five star rating and subscribe. With that being said, guys, let's get back to the show. Man, that's powerful. That's a, that's, that's a gem of all gems right there. Like when you got out of school, right? You get out of college, you get a degree, you're thinking, okay, what's next? What am I going to do? And you start your career. There had to be a time when you start your career where you may have second guessed yourself. Has that ever happened? For sure. I mean, I remember being in New York and saying, you know, do I really want to do this? It's such long hours. Um, do I want to be so far away from my family? I can't afford this city. Like, I don't know how I'm going to be able to make it. And then I'm going to have to like move to Queens. And like, I don't even know what that is. You know, like I was trying to live as close to like my office as possible, but Manhattan was so expensive. And at the time, like people didn't, I mean, people that grew up in Brooklyn and Queens, like they live there, but it, the boroughs hadn't become like this cool place to live as it is now. Um, so I would have all of that fear of just second guessing myself, um, to even like moving out here and having my child. I remember when I had my child, I was like, this is the worst idea that you ever had, you know, and just the guilt that I had for even thinking that. But I feel like a lot of times, you know, um, I I don't feel like God, puts anything in your lap or gives you anything that you're not supposed to really surrender to. And, and that's the other big, big point in that is that the more that we try to control, the more resistance that we actually create. So what I've been really trying to step more into and learn as I go and, you know, I have those doubts or I think that I've, you know, I, I'm, I've made a mistake or I've second guessed myself is to, to really like give it over. And when I get to those places, cause I feel that we as human beings, we, we can only take ourselves so far, right? And, and some people may have more bandwidth, right, to push through walls and to kind of get themselves further along than other people. Um, their, just their energy levels, their endurance, whatever that is. But there, you're going to get to a place that it's like you, you can't really get yourself any, for, any further. And that's when I believe that you have to kind of give that over to God or the universe or, you know, whatever you call that, just to say, I'm ready to hit that next stage. And if you want that for me, then like, great, let's go. But if not, then just get it out of my way so I can, I can take whatever is the next step, but kind of releasing that control and that force of of needing things to be a certain way. Man, it's powerful because if you just kind of surrender, I love the words that you're using. When you surrender and you let, you know, all of your, your doubts, your thoughts, your faith go truly to God and that it's in the best hands, that's when truly everything starts to align. And you'll see yourself starting to do things that you didn't even know you were even capable of. Or you see yourself on stages you didn't even know you could be on. 
And one of the things that I'm so excited about just having you on the show is watching you and your growth. So you, you have this, this PR thing that you're doing for a while. You start creating a podcast. You start, you know, catching a lot of steam. But recently, I heard that you were on a stage with 10,000 women out mm-hmm. there, right? Tell us a little bit about yeah. that. How was that experience for you? Yeah, I mean, it it was awesome in the sense that it it was something that I had always kind of felt within me that I wanted to do and that I could do. And to be able to to be around those people, I tend to like I feed off energy like that. But at the same time, it was absolutely terrifying. I mean, I had so many fears and doubts around like, am I going to say something stupid? Am I going to make sense? And are people are going to get bored? Are they going to fall asleep? Are they going to start like looking at their watch and wanting to know when this is over? Like all of those things that kind of come in place. But it was so interesting. A friend of mine, Brendan Burchard, who you might have heard of before. Yeah, he actually he texted me before I went onto that stage. And he was like, Julie, you have to remember that you were put in front of those people for a reason that you have a voice and you have a message and you have a mission that they need to hear. And, you know, you are, you are meant to be there like in this moment. And so own, own that like this, this really has nothing to do with you. Like Mm -hmm. there has been a a divine calling for you to be there. And by not showing up and trusting you're, you're kind of stealing from those who need you the most. Man, that's true. Because if you don't give them what, you know, what someone, you know, expecting from you, then you truly didn't serve a purpose. So you're showing up to make an impact. Yeah. And, and looking around, like you could even use people like Brendan, for example, or, you know, even, you know, massive celebrities like, you know, Lenny Kravitz when he's yeah. on stage. I mean, of course, he's done years and years and years of learning his craft, right? Like yeah. playing guitar and singing and all of that. But it's it's a great reminder to remember for all of us. We all bleed the same. We all sneeze the same. We all sleep the same. You know, it's like we we're, we're human beings are are the same. The only thing that is going to keep you from achieving something and a, and a lot of times can be that mindset of, well, I'm powerless to that. Or, you know, um, I can't do that because I don't have enough knowledge or resources or money or because, you know, I didn't, I wasn't born in the right family or I didn't grow up in the right place or, or what have you. Now, can there be other, other restrictions are, are certain people, certain people may have other challenges, whether that's socioeconomic or education or, um, learning challenges or, or whatever that is, but you still see highly successful people do amazing things that grew up with so much adversity and so much just struggle and pain. But that's where I really feel that, you know, the, the strength is in that hustle and the strength is in that pain. And the more that you push through, um, the more that you can really surprise yourself of, of what you're capable of doing. Man, and that's so true because at the end of the day, like, I feel like those people who have been through the most in life, they, they've seen, they've had the times where things weren't going their way. They're so determined to make sure that they never have to live that way or make sure that their kids never have to see those things that they went through. So that's so true and powerful. And I thank you for sharing that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's 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 persistence. I mean, take Oprah, for example, like if, if you read her biography, you would never think that that little girl could ever become what she came like you would have just thought that she would have become a cook just like her grandmother, you know, and the adversity and the pain and the abuse and all of the stuff that she went through. She's a Nashville woman. So I always like to talk about her. <laughs> we love Oprah. but it's like I love Oprah. And now it's like she's Oprah. Like she is Oprah. No one gave her that. She didn't come from a family of Oprah's. Like she stepped into that and she didn't let she persisted. She didn't let the adversity or the pain or the struggles or the trauma or any of that stuff get in the way of what she knew she was called here to do. And she's by far the perfect example of anything like that. Yeah, she's an icon. So I want I want to ask you the question that we've asked every single person that has ever jumped on this show. And, and the question is, is that if you were that current student or if you were somebody that dropped out, well, let's say you, you know, you graduated just like Julie graduated. Right. And you were asking yourself the question of the podcast. School's over. Now what? What advice would you give? You know, I think that I would most importantly say to trust that inner knowing. I think that there's a difference between reaction, like a a first thought that may be reactionary and like that gut intuitive instinct. And so a lot of times, you know, people say go with your gut, but they'll think that means like the the first thought, 
But the first thought can actually be a fear-based thought. Well, my gut said to move back home and live in my parents' basement, so I'm going to do that. Well, was that really your gut or was that your fear talking? So it would it would be to be still enough to really listen to that inner knowing and that inner voice and where it's it's calling you to go. And the, the more quiet that we can be and whether that's prayer or meditation or whatever that is for you, but the more still that you can be and the less doing that you can have and, and the clutter and the clatter to kind of move away and just give yourself that moment, even if it's just five minutes a day to just kind of ask, like, where do I need to go? What am I being called doing? Um, where do I need to be of service? And if you if you listen, you will you will get those hits. Uh, that's powerful. I think, I think, Julie, what you just told everybody is sometimes you got to get alone. And sometimes when you, when you get alone and you quiet out all of that noise, there's nobody that's going to know you better than you. And if it scares you, don't fall for that first instinct of being, you know, fearful, but fall yeah. for the fact that you know it's something that you should be doing. Julie, Absolutely. Somebody's listening right now. They want, they want more of you. They want to know, okay, where can I find her? Where is she at? Just give them all of your info so they can find out you and everything that's happening. Yes. And I, I want to say a quick moment because you said alone and it gave me a hit that James Taylor, who's North Carolina native, yeah. like one of the great, greatest songwriters of all time. Yep. He actually said that um, in an interview I heard recently. He said the 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 tr- your your truest and, and biggest form of creativity, of creative genius will come to you when you're in isolation. Oh, my so I goodness. thought that was really, really powerful. Yeah. So I just wanted to mention that and where you can find me. So I spend most of my time social media wise on Instagram and I'm at Jules J U L S Solomon S O L O M O N. You can also find me, um, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, wherever podcasts are listened to, uh, the influencer podcast, um, that comes out every week. Um, you can't miss it. And then of course, if you want to hear more about pitch it perfect, which is the program that we were talking about or my other programs, you can go to pitch it or Julie Solomon.net. Julia, I appreciate you. And for those that are listening, always remember, dream it, believe it, go out and get it. Yo, what you think? I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I want to know what you learned. So if you wouldn't mind, would you take a screenshot of you listening to the podcast on your phone right now? Upload to your Instagram stories, tag me at Sean R. Anthony underscore, and then let me know in that Instagram story what is one thing that you learned. I love hearing from you, my listeners, thought leaders, former or current students all around the world. Let me know. And while you're doing this, go inside the podcast app, subscribe, leave a five star review and a five star rating. Again, this helps us reach more people. And if you want to be a part of this mission, helping us change the world one person at a time, it makes a massive difference by you leaving a review. Thanks so much. I'll see you next week. And remember, dream it, believe it, go out and get it.